Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and The Flash movie was one of the most important reveals at DC Fandom Weekend, despite not having a trailer like the Batman or the Snyder Cut or the Suicide Squad did. What this movie did reveal from its early panel and what we learned about The Flash in later panels just confirmed that we might see the actual biggest superhero crossover of all time, a Flashpoint paradox that resolves every loose plot thread from nearly every DC movie we've ever seen, ties them up together in a bow that hopefully isn't very shoelaces tied together because that could totally Screw the multiverse. <laughs> There is actually so much to unpack about this movie, so I'm gonna break down everything we know about it and how it could be the most pivotal event in DC cinema going forward. Spoiler warning in case any of my predictions end up being right and you didn't wanna know. Okay, the DC Fandom panel revealed concept art showing Flash's new suit, a more form-fitting organic runner suit, truer, I would say, to the spirit of the character with wings on the helmet and Tron-style glowing lines emitting from the chest sigil. Now the art shows them fighting alongside Batman and not just any Batman, that yellow oval sigil is Keaton Batman. Earlier this summer, we learned that Michael Keaton was reprising his role as Bruce Wayne in this film, but instead of the older mentor figure we were led to believe, he looks here to be suited up and ready to beat down anyone well, within the borders of his peripheral vision. We also learned that Ben Affleck is going to be returning as Batman in this film. Hell yeah! And it was confirmed that Barry Allen was intentionally never called The Flash in the DCEU. That was a name he picked up from his crossover earlier this year with the CW version of The Flash on the Crisis on Infinite Earth's event. I like your outfit. It seems sick and comfy. Yours is pretty cool. Smooth. Seems safe it's and breathable. So what does all this info mean for the Flash movie coming in 2022? Well, directed by IT director Andy Muschietti and written by Christina Hodson, the film has been confirmed to adapt the Flashpoint event in the comics and feature Barry Allen using his cosmic treadmill to run so fast that he can travel precisely to moments in the future and in the past, which he uses to try to prevent the death of his mother, Nora. But in these attempts, he splits reality into alternate timelines and spends a lot of time in a Flashpoint universe, a darkest timeline where Batman is the murderous and cold-hearted Thomas Wayne, Bruce's father, and really, like, everything's wrong. Aquaman's Atlanteans sunk most of Europe, Wonder Woman's Amazonians have taken over the UK, everyone's fighting, but it's an awesome timeline meddling storyline, and this 2011 crossover event was so important to DC Comics because it ended with Flash condensing every alternate DC reality into one universe that was called, going forward, the New 52. And based on the way the panel described the film adaptation, DC Cinematic appears to be using this Flash film to do something similar with the various incarnations of Batman movies, Superman movies, and more. Now, Zack Snyder already laid the groundwork for this in Batman v Superman and appears to be revisiting it for his upcoming director's cut of Justice League. After that nightmare scene in Batman v Superman, The Flash visited Bruce from the future, asking if he was too soon, and telling Bruce that he was right about Superman and that Lois is the key. On social media, Snyder confirmed his intention to reveal that Barry had been using the cosmic treadmill, one set up in the Batcave beneath Wayne Manor, to run back in time to Bruce to warn him about the future, to tell him to save Lois Lois to prevent Superman from going Injustice Evil, but that Barry went back too far. And in that Snyder Cut panel, Snyder confirmed that he intends to pick back up with his time travel subplot. You're gonna see something with Flash in this film I don't think that you've ever seen before. Something that has to do with his abilities, because you know, he's a quantum character. He does, he, he interacts with time and space. So you might see him do something that is timely. Now I pointed out in my breakdown of the Snyder Cut trailer how a brief shot shows Barry in a kind of wind tunnel, reaching forward toward the light in a similar pose as the one through that time portal to Bruce in Batman v Superman. Now if you remember Barry's subplot arc in Justice League was to try to prove the innocence of his father, Henry, who was framed for the murder of Barry's mother, Nora. And by the end of that movie, he got a job in a crime lab. Wouldn't surprise me if Snyder keeps this scene in his recut. Because of the new footage, Snyder deliberately inserted a portrait of Thomas Wayne, Jeffrey Dean Morgan, in the ruins of Wayne Manor in that future sequence. And I think all of these clues, when tied together, tells us a whole bunch about this Flashpoint film. But before we continue, thank you to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this episode. Look, I get it. I'm a grown man talking about children's comic book characters. It's kind of like I'm back waking up early Saturday mornings to watch Batman the Animated Series with a bowl of super, super sugary cereal. But now I got to do it and, you know, take notes for new Rockstars research. And, you know, I can't really include the same sugary cereal anymore because I'm an adult and I have to sometimes think about my health. But now, thanks with Magic Spoon cereal, I can get back to eating cereal and not feel bad about it. Magic Spoon has no sugar, 11 grams of 
protein and is only 110 calories. It's also keto friendly, gluten free, grain free, soy free, low carb, and GMO free. It comes in four flavors, cocoa, fruity, frosted, and blueberry. You can try all four in a variety pack. All the flavors are great, but I'm really enjoying this fruity one. It's like a certain other fruity, loopy cereal, but um, honestly, I like it a lot better. And it's great knowing that it's actually good for me. I kind of do like it. I mean, it's for grownups. And look, they still give you a word search because um, there's no age limit there. Just click the link below to grab a variety pack and try it today. And be sure to use the promo code NEWROCKSTARS at checkout to get free shipping. Just go to magicspoon.com slash NEWROCKSTARS. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it is backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. Click the link below and use the code NEWROCKSTARS for free shipping or go to magicspoon.com slash NEWROCKSTARS. Okay, so from what we can tell from Zack Snyder's Justice League, it won't necessarily end with the happy ending that the cut did. Snyder's trailer showed the post-apocalyptic future in which Darkseid has ravaged the planet, but he recolored it from the tan filter he used when it was suggested to be a dream in BVS. This, plus the Thomas Wayne portrait, plus the Aquaman trident and the Diana shield, all added to the ruins of Wayne Manor that overlooks this riverbed, a manor that was previously abandoned but restored into the Hall of Justice after the events of Justice League, all suggest that this is a real future that awaits the Justice League despite their victory over Steppenwolf. Nevertheless, brought upon by Darkseid and a future that Flash will go back in time to try to prevent. And yes, I really think we're gonna get more of this in the Snyder Cut because I think a big reason why the studio funded Zack Snyder with $30 million to restore his Snyder Cut wasn't just to shut up fans, it wasn't just to secure a ton of HBO Max subscriptions, but really kill a third bird with that stone just skipping across ducks in a lake to really use the Snyder Cut to set up their big Flashpoint crossover film to close this DCEU chapter in a way that fans find satisfying and, like like the new 52 relaunch in the comics gets us all to look forward to a reset future. Reports are suggesting Snyder's Justice League miniseries could drop September 2021, which would be pretty perfect timing, because think about it, four weeks leading up to the Matt Reeves Robert Pattinson Batman movie dropping October 2021, four episodes of the Justice League on HBO Max that end with explaining how all these different Batman movies are connected. I think the Snyder Cut will reveal Barry's discovery of his ability to travel through time and change things in different timelines. From his perspective, it's a natural gust of wind, a constant of the universe that he can stumble into, but not one that he himself is God over. And like a wind tunnel, he must forcefully push himself against it in order to navigate and move along it. We might see a similar visual language used in the Flash film, but in order to move through this force with minimal resistance, he's gonna need a sleeker suit, which would be inspired by his crossover with the Flash in the CW event. He borrows that suit design and then sets off back in time to fix the timeline. And in doing so, as in the Flashpoint comics, Barry's gonna splinter reality into alternate timelines, each with its own incarnation of Batman and other DC characters, ones that we've seen before. This is how we're gonna get Keaton Batman. And rumor has it, Dan Danny DeVito Penguin in the same movie as Ben Affleck Batman. But it's also how we could get Jeffrey Dean Morgan to show up as Thomas Wayne Batman if they decide to visit that darkest timeline for the Flashpoint comics. I mean, think about it, a shit ton of stuff could get crossed over, at least according to the screenwriter in the panel. Batman lost his parents. Superman lost his planet. Harley Quinn lost her egg sandwich. But Barry, because he's got this ability to go back and manipulate time, he's the only one who can actually go and change his own personal story. Interesting that Hodson brought up Harley Quinn's breakfast sando, because if you look at that extreme close-up of the Flash script page that they showed, there is some scene in this movie in which the real Barry Allen gets a breakfast sandwich. We could be looking at a crossover in which he saves Harley Quinn's sandwich from Birds of Prey. And in the panel when they talked about the DC multiverse of titles that the Flash could theoretically cross over into, that montage showed Man of Steel, the 2016 Suicide Squad, the 2019 Joaquin Phoenix Joker, the Christopher Reeve Superman, Wonder Woman 84, and Linda Carter Wonder Woman, Batman v Superman, 89 Batman, Kilmer Batman, Clooney Batman, Lego Batman, HBO's Watchmen, Shazam, The CW, Batman Returns, and f***ing Constantine. 
Now, you could argue that these were just like hypothetical crossovers, a reminder of everything that DC has done in the Warner Brothers movies. But no, 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 this panel included a whole separate section in which the cast and crew speculated their more silly what if crossover ideas, which I believe makes that previous list something they're considering more closely. Especially if Keaton and DeVito are definitely crossing over. What's to stop Keanu? Nothing can stop Keanu. I'm thinking I'm back. I think the ultimate goal of this Flash film will be to redefine the forward-looking DCU titles like The Batman or Joker as futures disconnected from the past, but to close the book on each past DC Elseworld so that they don't feel like forgotten mistakes. And the most important of those would be Zack Snyder's DCEU. The fact that Ben Affleck is confirmed as a Batman for this movie and that Jeffrey Dean Morgan is at least speculated to be in it, to me is a very good sign that we could be getting one of my favorite moments from the Flashpoint story in which Barry Allen passes a letter written by Thomas Wayne to his son. It'll break our hearts and give Bruce some long needed closure and more importantly, give Ben Affleck the epilogue his underappreciated take on Batman deserves. Look, there's a lot more to talk about what we learned at DC's Fandom, so be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get all the latest updates as we get to them. You should also join our official Discord server where we go even deeper into these nerdy conversations and gives you an inside scoop on our thought process, how we find all this stuff. You can access it of becoming a patron of New Rock stars at any tier, even $1 a month. Just go to patreon.com slash new rock stars. You can follow me on Instagram at EA Boss. Follow New Rock Stars. Thanks for watching. Bye.